Um, hello, my name is Natasha Gadic, and I'm coming here from Rackspace, where I work with IT department, Enterprise Business Intelligence. Enterprise Business Intelligence processes large amounts of data from various sources in various formats. Some information is structured, some is unstructured. Some information provides the answers to the known questions, while some we need just to store and, exp uh, and allow business community to access it for their research. As we all know, the amounts of data around us is growing ex exponential. And for the um, analytical environment, it's harder and harder to predict the, uh, even the near, the near future capacity requirements. For traditional consumers of analytical databases, uh, like an business analysts, marketing analysts, data scientists, the certain delay in the data in analytical environments is acceptable. However, there is a more and more demand on the analytical environments to provide data to the support or external customers where a delay in data just doesn't cut it anymore. On the market today, we have access to the various technologies. Uh, for data stores, columnar, relational, Hadoop file system, and each of these technologies has been built with a certain uh, purpose and it does have its optimal use case in mind. Our idea was to expose these various technologies by a uniform interface and allow customers to select the optimal use case, of optimal data store for the use case they are, they are working on. Uh, we had access to the Rackspace private cloud powered by OpenStack, and that uh, allows us to think in this direction. Um, <coughs> we named such solution analytical compute grid. As the first thing, I'm just going to go briefly over the, the current Rackspace CBI environment. We run a lot of Windows and Linux operating uh, system with Oracle and Microsoft database solutions. Uh, we have the data loader is done through SSIS and Informatica, where Informatica is our newer uh, ETL choice, and it's loading both Oracle and Microsoft databases. All these processes are running on dedicated servers, and uh, currently we are faced with a rapid data set growth. <coughs> So moving into the big data arena with the current environment, we envisioned a lot of problems. First and foremost, the cost of purchasing licenses. We are concerned about the time it takes to set up the new hardware. We see increased demand for DBA resources. Overall, we are concerned about system performances, system scalability, and capacity. <coughs> so in order to resolve this big data problem, we put our heads together and said, okay, can Rackspace private cloud powered by OpenStack help us here? And during our discussions, we envisioned the system with the following features. <coughs> so we would like our system to host ever-growing sets of data, provide quick, quick data collection and retrieval, scale rapidly up and down, uh, be easy to maintain, provide standard data access API, in addition to this, we would like to, have a, to, uh, <coughs> to provide a variety of storage types, columnar, relational, HDFS, and we would like to enable users to select the optimal type of information, for top of optimal type of storage for information they collect, and, and that would be done use case by use case basis. We would definitely want to leverage Open, OpenStack private cloud power by, uh, Rackspace op private cloud power by the OpenStack, and open source technology in general. Uh, at the same time, we also define the quality attributes that we would like our new ACG system to possess, and we can see them on this slide. <coughs> we believe that list of features and these quality attributes is quite desirable for any big data analytical environment. Later on, we will see how Rackspace the private cloud powered by the OpenStack and ACG work together to attain these attributes. But before we get there, we have to know our ACG system a little bit better. Um, so on the next few slides we, slides, we will go over the ACG high-level architecture, and we will try to explain the dynamics of the system. So at the at the beginning of it all, 
that is the Rack Space Private Cloud powered by the Open Stack. And here below you, you see very high level specification of the system we currently have by keeping in mind that this is very beginning of the system and the, we foresee a significant growth of this environment in the next year. The EC ACG system starts with the creation of an image. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, we would like to support uh, three data stores. So therefore, we created three images, um, columnar, relational, and HDFS. At the same time, we also selected the database engine that will run under each of these images. And um, for columnar, we selected Cassandra, for relational Postgres, and for HDFS, of course, Hadoop. A member of ACG system is a node, and a node is instantiated from corresponding image. So the, the node has all the information, the new node has all information the, uh, all, and all processes needed to join, the uh, to join the ACG system. As we can see there, there is a corresponding database engine, and there is a data store collector. Controller. Data store controller is a database specific process that manages the uh, database on the node during the lifetime of the node in the ACG system. Uh, when node starts up, data store controller gathers all information about the environment that the node is joining to, prepares database configuration, and starts up the database uh, accordingly. During the lifetime of the node, uh, the data store controller maintains the, manages the database during system reboot, maintains knowledge about configuration of the system, and maintains the knowledge of the activities within a system. Also keeps track of the health of the node and uh, issue any corrections if necessary. In addition to the data store controller, there is a system stati statistics controller. Co collector, and as the name says, um, it basically just collect, collects statistics about the node that is running to it. We collect three types of statistics. Uh, we collect uh, OS statistics, which is CPU utilization and free memory. Um, JVM statistics that are applicable, mostly focusing on the, on the heap size, and database statistics, number of reads, number of writes, size of the database and any other statistics that, that can database can provide. Um, in addition to this process, there is the ACG indexing structure. This structure is in the core of many quality attributes we saw previously, <coughs> and therefore we will go in the details of that structure a little bit later in the presentation. <coughs> For this system to function, we need a controller. Um, and uh, on the controller side, we have a following components. Um, ACG manager, which is the RESTful web service, rule engine, node manager, and persistent data store. Uh, ACG manager as a RESTful web service is the central communication point of the system. Data store controllers contact ACG manager to learn about the environment that the node operates within. Depending on the data stores, these details are different. For Cassandra, that would be the, you know, the seed nodes or uh, name of the cluster on the startup. For relational database, it can be, is the database prime, starting as primary or a replicate. For HDFS system, is the configuration of the, of the system itself, location of the name, name nodes, job trackers, and also uh, data files. Um, the system statistics collector contacts, um, uh, submits its collected statistics to the controller via ACG manager. As the ACG manager uh, accepts the statistics, it stores it into ACG data store so that it can be presented in the UI. In the UI, we can see the, the current um, nodes that are running in the system, their current statuses, and also a brief history in about 20, like 24 hour history of the utilization. 
in addition to storing data in uh, storing the statistics into the data store, ACG manager uh, plays statistic into the queue. Rule engine it consumes the information in the from the queue. Rule engine is quite robust um, engine and allows us to define uh, the rules that control the elasticity of the ACG system. We have two types of rules, system utilization rules and, and the scheduling rules. System utilization rules can be, can be um, created from any system statistic, any combination of system statistics collected. For example, we can say um, if the percent of the CPU utilization goes above certain number and available memory is uh, uh, less than another number and uh, database exper experience high I.O. In addition to those, we can throw in the time dimension. We can say, okay, for how many consecutive reads this needs to, have to occur and what is the percentage of the nodes in the system that needs to experience a bottleneck? As for the scheduling rules, um, they can be used to prepare the system for heavy activity. As we are talking here about analytical environment, um, lots, of, lots of tasks in analytical environments are batch in nature. So <coughs> we can add more CPU power to the system to support the heavy activities and then pull, pull it back once the jobs are done. <coughs> uh, scheduling rules also can be used to periodically check the, the health of the system and verify that the database ca capacities are available. Um, regardless of the rule type, type uh, once the rule threshold is met, the um, rule engine contacts node manager and requests certain operations to be performed. So in the case that we experience the high utilization of the system, the node manager will contact um, Rackspace uh, private cloud powered by OpenStack to add nodes to the environment. Uh, so at the, uh, at the same time as these transactions occur, the node manager records information into the data store. So as the new nodes come up, um, <coughs> da data store controller on these nodes contact learn about the environment by contacting ACG manager, and then they position themselves uh, properly in the new environment. At the same time, the UI is updated with information from the, from the data store, and the existing ACG node learn about the changes by contacting ACG manager. <coughs> um, on the data access side, we are uh, currently working, uh, we would like to provide, provide a standard interface to access data in, the, in this system. And for now we are working on uh, completing the JDBC driver while we will also expose native libraries of the underlying data engine and a native bulk loader. We see them you be used in Informatica mostly as the ETL tool. <coughs> Uh, so as now we we'll saw a little bit about how the system function, let's take a look at this indexing structure. So, so what is the indexing structure? Indexing structure is a single entry point into the system that, that is fully load balanced and replicated and it resides on the set of Rackspace private cloud powered by OpenStack instance. It is a set of pointers ultimately pointing to the database entities. And in our case, database entities are, in a relational sense, it would be the table, in, uh, or in HDFS would be a file, or in columnar would be a column family. Um, it is um, a structure that is fully controlled by the controller, the same way as the data nodes are controlled as we saw previously. Um, therefore, as the rule engine finds out that the index nodes are overutilized, it can issue change in the indexing structure. So the indexing structure is elastic it itself. However, as we need to maintain the single entry point into the system, 
it, it, this structure din it dynamically expands vertically and horizontally to address the growing data set. So what does it enable us to do? First of all, it um, enables us to distribute databases across many instances, in traditional sense databases that we know of today. It allows us also to split la large data sets, like tables or structures, across many instances. Consequently, allows us to run the la queries, large queries in parallel ac across all these, across available instances, and allows us to deploy data stores with their optimal configuration so that we minimize maintenance. So we can, we can have the configuration that doesn't need to change during the life cycle of the node within the system. Also, as a single entry point allows us to access various storage types via uniform interface. On this, here we see uh, several like additional components and that is the sorter and aggregator that is required to resolve queries that need the, any kind of summarization, aggregation, uh, and also to combine the results from various, um, various data stores. In the future, we are looking to actually add uh, option where we will uh, be able to uh, run the queries that combine the data from heterogeneous data sets. Um, let's go uh, now when we know a little bit more about our system, let's take a look at the quality attributes we listed at, at the beginning and see how uh, Rackspace, Private Cloud, Powered by OpenStack and ACG work together. Um, first thing we can take a look is performances. There are two types of performances, performance of elasticity of the system and query performance. Um, Rackspace Private Cloud Powered by OpenStack creates um, a single, uh, instantiates a node within a 30 seconds. So from the image that we created to get the, the, the VM that is joined, in, that is in the environment, running the database, it takes about 30 seconds. Uh, we also can create nodes concurrently. Some, some rules, when they, when they start, they can say, okay, we need to double the size of the node that we have in the system and all nodes, all requests are issued concurrently and the, that number of new nodes is available almost at the same time. Um, when we con ability to control the data set size um, allows us to quickly, why, I mean in this environment, why is it important to control the data set size? So that when the system expands and when the data distribution occur, that that can complete in a, complete fast. So that, that is why we need the indexing structure to control the data set size. We, it also allows us on a data retrieval to run queries in parallel and therefore to get the results quick, get the results quickly. Um, another feature that we would want, wanted to accomplish is scalability. <coughs> and many, um, actually many, um, a fun uh, like functionality that enables performances of elasticity is pretty much the one that enables scalability, but it's very important for us to. Um, so we have a, the system will scale quickly because we can quickly create the nodes and we can do that concurrently. We also have ability to re resize existing nodes. Sometimes we don't need to, not some, in some rules, we don't need to add a new node, but we can add a CPU power to the existing nodes to perform the tasks and then pu pull that out. And we also have ability to remove nodes which allows us to scale down. Again, on the ACG side, indexing structure and control data sets stabilize system quickly after the expansion or contraction occurs. Availability. Uh, we can rapidly, as we saw, we can rapidly replace failed nodes. And underneath, in, within ACG, because we are deploying the existing database engine, we are actually deploying the data store native availability me mechanism. Replication, data distribution, anything that corresponding data store comes with. It's all available. Uh, we see significant gain 
on the maintainability side by using the ACG system. Um, adding new nodes uh, actually increase our storage capacity, increase our CPU power and our RAM, while at the same time does not require any intervention from system administrator or data administrator. Um, the fact that we are controlling the data set size enable us to run the databases with optimal and stable configuration. So once we come up with the configuration, we don't need, like that doesn't need to, it's in the image and doesn't need to change during the life cycle of the node on within the system. We, um, we also reducing the demand for managing a data store object. In traditional sense, sense uh, on very large databases, we, will, we would have um, indexes and uh, partitions, and we need to take care of their placement and many other things. In this situation, the indexes, of course, will still exist, but special managing of those objects is not required any longer. In addition to that, the stable, we will benefit from the stable query execution plan. In the large databases, often, when, when even when we do the, uh, like, go through full tuning exercise, have the right indexes in place, everything is there, but the database keeps on growing and growing, and when it reaches such a certain threshold, query plan just decides to take a different path, and our performance is then suffered. And that cannot be resolved until another major tuning exercise that usually results in a, a database configuration changes, stable configuration changes, and changing even the, the, the queries that are running on it to introduce the hints and find different ways to, to get the, the query executed fast. Now in this situation, because of the database size is controlled and then it grows over a certain threshold, it sta we start another one, um, we, will, we shouldn't be experiencing this kind of problem. Uh, flexibility um, <coughs> is, is very important for us because we process the data in various formats and receive them in various formats. So we would like to enable, as we mentioned earlier, three different storage types. And we believe that each storage type has its optimal case. So for columnar, we did choose, we choose Cassandra and we, we see that it's a really good choice for time series data, and time series data is very b big subject in analytical data. For <coughs> relational, we see we, will, we use Postgres, and for example, data warehouse, legacy data warehouse would be the environment that would benefit, uh, would run uh, in this environment. And of course, HDFS is Hadoop, and we would like to use it for unstructured data on, only, not, we are not trying to make something else out of it. We would like it to run as it's intended. Uh, we, we will enable a user to select the optimal storage type for the data that they are working with, and that selection would occur on the data intake. Usability. We mentioned earlier, like we are looking to provide a standard interface. We will support the SQL language, uh, JDBC API for now. We we will be looking into ODBC option, but JDBC I is something that would suit our needs at the moment. Um, we will enable data store native calls as well, na native backloader utility, and in the future. Uh, we would like to support the joining of heterogeneous data sets. So for columnar and a query that would, that would run on a uh, request data from columnar and relational, for example. Uh, and if this presentation is the really a use case, uh, we would like to tell you briefly about very recent experience we had with uh, this environment. Uh, keeping in mind, again, that this is very beginning of it. We've been working on this for, I would say, less than six months. Uh, and uh, recently, we were, we were faced with a very high-profile project that processed very large amounts of data, performed calculation, that produced large number of records. And as we had, we had some of the data 
already in our legacy database, um, which is Microsoft SQL Server Data Warehouse Environment. So we already had some data that are required for this calculation. So as the first thing, we decided to add the sources that we did not have and develop our calculation in using SOAR procedure and uh, get the results in the data in within the data warehouse environment. At the same time, we were kind of feeling ready that we can deploy our, do the same in our, AC, in our ACG environment. So we developed the ETL process with, for which we have already, like it's, we already did a lot of work there and it, it would load any of this environment just by providing, selecting the destination and providing the, the rows or records that you want to load. <coughs> So we, this actually gave us opportunity to, pr to compare two systems side by side, and this is what this use case is about. So the, sub the subject of this was uh, <coughs> a complex, it's complex availability calculation, and it's sourcing only three months of the, day of the monitoring data and creating one billion records in initial calculation. So first environment was our data warehouse environment. So that was a SQL server and we used the SSIS for data loading. We actually had, a, we were at the same time in the process of moving our, our data warehouse to another server. So we, we had that new server on our, on our disposal for initial calculation. So it was doing nothing else but this calculation. Uh, we had, of course, cal run calculation in the I mean, we ran it in the SOAR procedure, and we, the results and, and, and source were in traditional data warehouse structures like star schema and so, and so on. So <coughs> for the second environment, we didn't have our environment, and we, through our node manager, we instantiate the whole environment in about a minute. It was there. It consists uh, on four Cassandra nodes and uh, indexing structure, and it was the, the, that environment for the calculation was registered within indexing structure. Each node was running on two CPU. Each eight node is, has two CPUs and eight gigabytes of RAM. We developed calculation in Java and source and results were stored in a columnar structure. And we see that as a suitable structure for time series data. So these are some the, of the results. The, what we ran on Microsoft SQL Server lasted for about five days, while an ACG finished in three and a half hours. On the storage side, we, we gained substantial savings. And granted, in Microsoft SQL Server, there are many indexes that take a good chunk of this uh, space. We do have, um, uh, but we don't really need those in the column structure. They, 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 they are not required. And as the columnar structure is better suitable for time series data, our Java program was way simpler than store procedure that was doing the same task. So wh what did we gain? We, it, we can summarize as the follows. We gained substantial performance improvement. We reduced storage demand. We simplified our processes. We now have ability to process terabytes of data per day close to the real time or demand. If you remember at the very beginning of this use case, I said that this is just a three months of data that this was done for. So we are, at this point, we feel confident that we can go ahead and, and continue to provide this results of this calculation and sources that contribute to this cal calculation continuously. We also improved our trending and reporting. Uh, a, uh, then when we start working with the Microsoft SQL Server, we, we knew that our, we will be about 24 hours behind. Right now, we, our calculation is just coming and it's almost real time. All the, all the records that uh, contribute to this, this calculation, they are available as they occur in the sources. So um, there is, is significant improvement and we achieve significant cost reduction because we will not be expanding our legacy as, as 
you know, as, as we should, if we had to, if we want to support the amount of data that we are faced with. That's it. Very nice talk. Uh, just a quick question. Did you consider a uh, Hive or some already a query language, okay. SQL-like language? Uh, for the, uh, right now for Hadoop, we run it under, in ACD, we run it under Hive. We will be looking to remove, we would like to actually remove Hive and have uh, like my producer as a service available. So, because we, again, I'm, what, what our goal is to use the system in, in their in their optimal way. We don't want to make them do something else that they, they were not originally intending to do. So which I think the hive is kind of doing that. Well, you, you, I mean, the, the, the how you usually you would double the, 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 if your replication and distribution is on three, you would add another three nodes so that this actually evens out and you keep on following that exponent as you, as you add more nodes. So now elasticity really uh, is the most significant uh, is on, on the Cassandra, on the Cassandra level here. The Hadoop by itself is really storing large amounts of data anyway. So you, it's not something that will occur very often in the Hadoop environment, but, the, but the, in Cassandra, is because we, Cassandra actually distributes the data as it expands, you have to make sure that this, the size is controlled so that that process doesn't take very long. Scaling back, yes, it, it is, uh, we see that scaling back will mostly happen when we add the CPUs and take them down, but we can get, get the nodes out and we run into this situation where we actually take the nodes down and it redistributes itself. It takes a little bit longer time. But we don't, uh, again, all this elasticity stuff will be, it has to be taken in, you know, in, in the consideration of the real environment. So scaling up and down is mostly on the CPU adding and removing. We have, uh, we have three types of storage, columnar, relational, and HDFS. So whatever they provide, we use that. And what is underneath, it's a block storage. Okay, in this, okay, if that, in this case right now is, is what we have, our environment right now is very, very beginning of, of our environment and right now is a local storage, that is correct. Okay, if, if, when we if we change that, to, we will eventually, uh, again, I'm saying this is at, at this point. We will have a co completely new environment and we will have that dynamically ability to add the storage and uh, start make use of the storage within a private, e within a Rackspace private cloud, our system as the consumer of the Rackspace private cloud. And that will happen next year. Right now it's, uh, it's a little Uh, we will uh, see with our uh, Rackspace private cloud team and we will talk to them about our needs and we see what, what will be the best. Um, well, localization of the data is uh, whatever, basically with the Hadoop in general, you don't really need uh, to redistribute. You keep whatever is there, then you add a new, as that file is growing, you can add a new, new VMs that will then take over and try, start inserting there. And when the queries are running, in, in that case, then they will know to run in parallel across. So that, that's, that's how we resolve.
when the, it's expanding or contracting, when, when the elasticity occurs? Yes, bulk load. Yes. Well, they sit outside, like that is the system, ACG system is composed of the nodes that store data. Web server and other stuff are sitting on totally different environment. They have access to each other and they it's control it, but it does not impact it in that way. The, the loading is actually occurring through the indexing structure up. Thank you.